So in our last video, we were looking at a slightly more advanced example of uh, computing a Galois group. Um, so, you know, again, we uh, talked about what the Galois group of a field extension is. And what is it? Well, it's all of the automorphisms. So in this case, uh, it would be all of the automorphisms, sigma on uh, the field Q adjoin square root of two I. Um, and again, such that uh, if you restrict sigma to just Q, so Q is kind of like your base field, uh, it just acts like the identity. Okay, so that was our definition. And uh, we know, uh, I talked about this in the first video, that there's automatically at least one element of this group, which is the identity on Q adjoin square root of two I. So this is always an example of an element of the Galois group. And last time we figured out that um, the total number of elements of this Galois group is equal to four. And so now we're gonna try to find what the other four elements are. And so I claim that uh, here's two more examples of elements of the, the Galois group. So one of them is gonna be the map sigma that sends square root of two to negative square root of two, and that doesn't do anything to i. Um, so I'm gonna claim that this is an automorphism on this bigger field. Um, and just knowing these two relations, you kind of know what sigma is doing to every element of the field, because again, the field is spanned by just these four numbers. So it's a Q vector space. And so once I know that uh, root two goes to negative root two and I goes to I, so nothing changes, um, I automatically know what happens to, to numbers of this form because I can just apply sigma to, to each of these. And of course, sigma only acts on these two numbers. It doesn't do anything to elements of Q. So this is an example of a Q linear automorphism. Um, on, again, the bigger field. Uh, okay, so this seems like it's uh, an, an example of um, a, a, an automorphism that is contained in the Galois group. Another example would be the obvious thing, which is that you just uh, reverse this. So square root of two goes to square root of two, and i goes to negative i. Um, and, you know, again, you, you kind of know what this map does, like uh, if I have, just to give a more concrete example, so if I have like one half plus uh, square root of two uh, plus, you know, seven i. So this is a, an, an element of the, the, the larger field that we're working with. But what tau would do to this element is it wouldn't do anything to the one half it wouldn't do anything to the square root of two. Uh, and then it would flip the seven i to negative seven i. Um, and, you know, so you kind of get like an action on, on the elements of the larger field. Um, yeah, so, so this is a, an automorphism. Uh, what about if you do a sigma followed by tau? So what if you look at the uh, composition of these two automorphisms? And if you do the composition of these, um, and it turns out that the order doesn't matter, um, well, this basically means you're doing tau and then you're also doing sigma. And so that means that both square root of two, you know, this goes to, to negative square root of two, and then i goes to negative i. And so it's kind of like both at the same time. Um, but what you notice about all of these maps is that they're all distinct. And furthermore, they all square to the identity, right? Because if I do sigma, right, like sigma sends root two um, to negative root two, that's what you get if you just do sigma once. But then if you do sigma again, 
this sends it to negative negative root 2. And so it kind of just sends you back to where you started. And so similarly, you can check with all of these that um, they're basically squaring them just gives you the identity. Uh, and this goes back to our original question of like, uh, which uh, one of these was the Galois group equal to? And we just found that that um, there's these different elements of the, the Galois group and they all square to the identity element. Um, you know, and like there's only one of these two groups um, has uh, four distinct elements, all of which square to the identity. And that is, oops, that's this one. Um, every element of the Klein 4 group squares to the identity, but that's not true for, for this group because it's a cyclic group. Um, and so to go back to, to the original problem we were trying to solve, right, we were like, what is the Galois group of this extension? Uh, what was the Galois group of Q adjoin root 2i over Q? Um, we knew it had four elements, but by um, sort of like enumerating the elements explicitly, we figured out that it's actually equal to V. Um, so this is a more uh, complicated example than the previous one, but it still kind of illustrates the steps that you're like, basically, what's the, the degree of the extension? And from knowing the degree of the extension, you know the size of G. And then you just try to figure out what the automorphisms are explicitly, and then that tells you which um, one of the groups it could possibly be. Um, so, and you know, this uh, works pretty well um, when the groups have a smaller uh, order, right? And you can imagine that this would get a lot more challenging if the order of the group is a lot bigger, because then it's harder to basically narrow down like which group it could possibly be, because there's a much larger um, number of choices. Um, so yeah, but that's um, basically another example. Um, and basically with these examples, I'm just trying to illustrate, um, you know, at least at the introductory level, what Galois theory is sort of supposed to be, uh, which is just explicitly computing, um, you know, what are all of the, the, the automorphisms on a field. Um, and that's kind of like the basic problem. Um, so, you know, I'll finish this video and then I, I think I'll do one more video. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the structure of uh, fields because this is another um, important idea in Galois theory. And, you know, basically, uh, in some sense, this is kind of the reverse of the previous thing that we were talking about. Um, so up until this point, we've been talking about if you have a field extension uh, L over K, how can you understand the automorphisms, the K linear automorphisms on L? Um, and we had uh, a theorem from Galois theory that was helping us do that. But another question that you might ask is, uh, what do you know about the actual structure of these two fields? Um, so again, you know, I, I kind of like this uh, example because it's relatively straightforward. So you have Q adjoined square root of two and you have Q, um, but what's really going on here? Like is, um, is Q adjoined square root of two just slightly larger than Q? Is it actually larger enough that there's kind of another field, right? So like, is there something else sitting in between these? And so this is what I kind of mean by like the structure of fields, right? Like, um, are there intermediate fields that are sort of sitting in between fields like this? Um, 
And so this is another like basic question from, from Galois theory, um, in addition to just computing the actual Galois group. Um, and so in the next video, um, I'll give my second sort of uh, fact, uh, which will help us answer this question. So I will see you then.